Hey everyone, I'm coming to you from across the pond, unless of course you are one of my UK subscribers, then I am closer to you than ever. I am in Manchester, we arrived safely, I uh, was able to rest a bit and kind of get over some of the, uh, I guess you could say, physical difficulties I had with the trip. Flying is really hard on my health, but I do think it will be worth it, absolutely, even though I think the total travel time is about 50 hours, despite only being here for about 50 hours. So there were moments where Steve and I looked at each other on the trip thinking, why are we doing this? Why are we going across the ocean, halfway across the world for one song, one song, three minutes, right? But we all know that this is more than one song. This is a massive opportunity for me. This is a massive uh, cause and a big, big rally. And it's going to be way bigger than I thought. When we got to the hotel, I realized when in the elevator that there is a notice up and they've sent emails out to people and they're letting staff and guests know about this rally that's occurring because it's really, really close to our hotel. And I guess they're expecting, or police in Manchester are expecting five to 10,000 people and a multitude of protesters. So it's going to be a really, really big event. My understanding is they've had to possibly move it a little bit because of some issues. So I'm not sure what's happening tomorrow. Waiting to hear from Tommy again here uh, in the morning to catch up and make more plans. So I look forward to either live streaming the event or letting you guys know who is live streaming the event. Steve will be probably videotaping me when I'm up there for sure and we'll go from there. Beyond that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about England, Britain, the UK. Um, I'm really glad I didn't read the news before I came here because <laughs> I might not have come here. Uh, my parents are really worried that I'm here because, of course, of Antifa and everything else. But because the UK, of course, has gotten a reputation for some pretty brutal terrorist type attacks as well as knife violence and acid attacks, which are terrifying. So here I'm thinking, well, we're only in London for a short time and everything's going to be fine and don't be paranoid. You know, us right wingers, we're just so full of fear. We just live in fear and, and racism and whatever else, right? Of course, that's what everyone thinks. Well, you know, sometimes getting afraid is a very logical response. It's like statistical analysis, you know? So when I arrived in London and we went through our various stations and went to the train station, the Euston train station, got up to Manchester, you're not really thinking too much about any detriment to your safety. You just assume you're going to be okay. Then I get to the hotel, I'm doing some reading, watching some videos, and I watched Jack Buxby's video uh, of Rebel Live, or of the Rebel, pardon me, in England, and he was recapping the week's events, murders and stabbings, and just horrible things that are going on in London, including two of the places we went to, I think three places in London, two of them have had massive issues in the last week, including a stabbing um, and a murder. So interestingly enough, uh, we were right in the thick of it and didn't even know it. Get to Manchester, and I didn't know much because I wasn't maybe as involved in international politics last year as I am now, but there was a massive terrorist attack in Manchester last year at the stadium, and it was, I think, over 20 people died. Um, I think it said 800 plus were injured and over 100 were hospitalized, as well as many with psychological trauma. And I read an article today about a survivor, uh, I believe it was her parents had died, and they were saying, please don't let, you know, there's this whole thing now, I'm trying to keep up with Canadian news, American news, uh, with this ISIS fighter, you know, of course this is happening frequently, but there's this woman and her child wanting to come back, and Trump said no, right? And of course this is a big issue in Canada because we have this new theory that we can rehabilitate ISIS fighters and their families, and it's a big mess. And apparently the UK, much like, you know, Trudeau's government does sort of believe that you can just bring them back, and if they say they're sorry, you just believe it, and and heaven forbid, and we all have to have sympathy. And Julie Moore did a great video on this tonight. Uh, I was watching it just to kind of stay connected to home while I'm over here, and she talked about how Canada suffers from sort of just this constant level of empathy and compassion, or we think it is, right? We just have these bleeding hearts. We have to feel bad for her and her kid, and I do. I do feel bad for her and her kid. I do. I feel for the woman, and I always feel for the kid. I always feel for the kid because the kid did not choose this. However, Feeling for someone and having sympathy for someone. I think that was her words. I think everyone should have sympathy for me. I do have sympathy for her. However, that does not equate trust. You cannot be naive enough to think that everybody that says that they're sorry is sorry. You cannot be naive enough to think that somebody who's been radicalized can just be de-radicalized. It doesn't work that way. And I find it very alarming that people in Canada, as Julie said, would rather sacrifice the lives of their own Canadian fellow Canadian citizens who have not made a crappy choice, who have not joined a terrorist organization overseas and then wanted to come back. You're risking their lives, their health, their safety. 
How is that empathy? It's not. So to tie that back as to what I'm doing here in the UK, what led me to come, you know, despite having some health issues and despite it going to be a cost to us for, for Steve having come with me, thank God he's here. I, I really am glad it would have been so stressful and so scary without him. But, um, you know, it is costing us. It's coming out of his school savings. It's a big risk. It's a bit of an investment. It's a big, big trip, you know, and it's, it's a bit of a risk in, in many ways, including my safety. So why am I here? Why would I do this? Right. And ultimately reading those articles and watching that video and watching Julie speak again, really, really confirmed why I'm here. I'm here because at the end of the day, if we keep going the way we're going with things like the policies that Trudeau has been putting into place and with this lackadaisical view of terrorism, we are going to end up like the UK. Tommy Robinson, love him or hate him, is a canary in the coal mine. And what is going on here can happen very, very easily in Canada. Since 2014, I believe 2014 to present, there have been hundreds of deaths in Europe, like 480 or 500, I don't even know the number, that are linked to Islamist terrorism. That's massive. These are not numbers to scoff at. This is not one once in a while. And the argument in Canada is, well, more people have been killed by Christians than Muslims. Yeah, for now. And that we know of. I mean, we all know that there's some iffy questions about some of the attacks, such as Danforth, but I won't get into that. Let's say, for all intensive purposes, that it's true. That statistically, Muslims have not killed Canadians in any capacity worth worrying about. What about prevention? Because it's happening to our brothers and sisters in the UK. And it's terrifying. A terrorist attack happened in the city that I am sleeping in for the next two nights that killed over a hundred people, including children, in the name of Islamism. So why am I here? 99 pounds soaking wet. And to be honest, kind of freaked out. I'm here because I need to be here. If I can be a part of this message, I will. If I can support this message, I will. What's going on in England right now needs to be exposed, and that's not even what this rally is about per se. This one is more about the BBC, character assassinations, all that stuff, but it all ties in because the people who are fighting this are getting slandered. They aren't being taken seriously because the media has taken so much time and effort to make sure that everybody thinks they're terrible, terrible Islamophobic racist pieces of crap. And that's what happened to Tommy Robinson. And Tommy Robinson, ironically, is hated by multiple groups. But it's interesting because the, the far left or left type leaning political people think Tommy is a far right Islamophobic racist. In reality, go to any of Tommy Robinson's videos and read some of the comments and tell me that you think he's far right. The far right hates Tommy Robinson. They hate him. They think he's a Zionist shell. They hate Avi too, because he's really, really Jewish. And they hate me and think I'm a Zionist shill. I've been called a Zionist shill like 30 times since I started my channel. I get called a Zionist shill more than I get called a, a racist or any of the other terms that conservatives get called for doing YouTube eating videos on these types of things. So no, Tommy Robinson is not far right. He is hated by the far right. And being afraid of getting, you know, blown up is not entirely illogical and therefore is not phobic. Phobia is an irrational fear. I feel that being afraid of being bombed or gang raped as a young girl, for example, is a very valid fear. And I feel like if I have empathy for those young girls, which I feel every time I sing that song, I think of these girls, I think of Marissa Shen, although we don't know the particulars, that wasn't a grooming gang, I'm not saying it's the same thing, but it carries the same feeling. The loss of innocent lives is not okay. True empathy means we take care of those least vulnerable. True empathy means that you can consider the whole picture. And it also means you have to use your head and your heart and your gut, as I always try to promote on this channel. So tomorrow, I'm going to do that. I'm going to fight for something that I believe is important. I'm going to sing my heart out. I'm extremely nervous, but very, very excited and very honored to be here. And I'm a little nervous because not just of the pressure of, you know, maybe singing in front of five to 10,000 people, but because of how angry people are at all of this, including some pretty radicalized Muslims. So please do keep me in your prayers. I don't feel too concerned. There's tons of security. Steve's got my back. The police presence will be here. 
Um, I'm not too concerned about being physically assaulted or anything, but it does carry that potential and I had to be aware of that coming here. I know my parents aren't real happy about me being here whatsoever, but they couldn't exactly stop me. I'm a grown woman. So here I am across the world or across the ocean doing something that I never expected I would be asked to do and never expected I would do. So that's about it. I just want to update you guys a little bit on kind of what's going on over here. You, people have asked me to report on what's happening in the UK. I'm not going to be here long enough to really give you a good uh, lowdown on what's happening in the country. I can say that yes, London is extremely multicultural. Um, it was very hard to find someone that spoke English to get directions when we were struggling in the train system. Um, I, I don't know. You know, Manchester's different. Manchester seems a little bit more maybe homogenous. I'm not really sure what the landscape is. Probably going further north to more rural places, you find um, a different demographic. But I can't report much on, on the changing demographics of London, but I can certainly see how it's shifting. And where is it going to lead? I don't know. I see all these cathedrals and everything around, and I think of all the things that this country was built on. And I'm trying to imagine what it would look like in 50 years with those cathedrals torn down and turned into mosques and... Yes, I find that a little freaky. So, um, I guess if that makes me an Islamophobe, then throw the label on me. You might as well. I'm getting all the other labels anyway. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your weekend. I'm going to try to live stream tomorrow, like I said, or at least put bits and uh, pieces of coverage out. But I'm certain that Tommy will be live streaming this or maybe Ezra. I'm not really sure. Or it will be played back um, at some point on the internet. I suspect there'll be a lot of coverage. So. I will keep you guys posted as best as I can. I'm off to rest and try to kill this last bit of jet lag. Take good care and thank you all so, so much for your support. I appreciate it more than you know.